So this is where we left off in the previous video. You'd baked out your diffuse map, you'd baked out an occlusion map, and then layered those up quickly in Photoshop to give you this sort of image you can see before you. If we just open up this layer here, we can see we have our two occlusion maps, one with soft light set at 50% opacity, one multiply set at 50% opacity. And just a little tip is to actually name your layers just so that you can look at them and know exactly what the blending mode is and opacity is without having to physically go in and select them. So there we have diffuse, we have our lighting pass which is giving us that extra bit of depth to the model and also we can use this to help guide us as we paint as we can see where other main areas of the geometry are if we were just working on this we'd be working a bit blind but adding the lighting just gives us that extra bit of help as we go and to add to that we've also got a wireframe which is just a UV snapshot exported from Maya as well. As you can see this just gives us the border detail and shows us where the actual mesh and the UVs are. So from here if I just turn off the wireframe briefly so from here we can start to concentrate on Photoshop now and start building on this basic texture and I'm saying it's basic is because at the moment it's quite sparse of detail, there's nothing really there apart from the colour and lighting. What we want to do is start to add, make this a little bit more unique. So the first stage is to think about what sort of larger areas of detail you want to add to this. And this could be uh, lettering or stickers, decals, things like that which sort of make this uh, a bit more unique. Perhaps you want to add in logos which associate it with the company that makes this sort of machinery. You know, just think of things like that. So if I go to this stage one group here, this stage, um, if I enable this, you can see here, just quickly added in some lettering here, some on the back. These strips here, which just add a bit of uh, detail to the surface as well. Also some some warning stickers, because on any heavy machinery you do tend to get all these sort of warning stickers around it about um, the load it can carry, don't climb on it, warnings about it being electrical, this, that and the other. So that just sort of ties it all in with the theme of the model. The next stage after that is to then work in, and I've called it a recess layer and I'll explain that shortly. But as you can see here, if I just turn it on and off again, all this is is just black lines, dots and circles and whatever other shapes you want to use. And this is going to mark out any extra panelling which we've got on the surface of the model. Also these dots here as well. It's all just about thinking about surface detail. And we've drawn this in black because later on we can use this when we generate our bump map and that's why it's called a recess because black will be pushed into the surface of the model. If we wanted to we could do a an inverted version and that would pull details out of the model. So if you wanted in, in, in addition to the recess you could do a, an extra one um, just to mark those out just so you know where they are as you start painting your textures because as we start painting these it's a good idea to know where these uh, panels are here just so that we know where to add wear and tear where we can add bits that have been worn away and where we can add dirt um, and general damage and it'll sort of work al along the edges of these uh, recesses here there's also a little red dot there which I just added on as like a little red light as well so if we just switch to Maya and just have a look at how this is looking on the actual model so here we can see all I've done is as I'm working through this we're just going to be looking at the torso texture page here so as you can see we have our text we have our red dot we have all these other de uh, details marked out we have our stickers and that's just telling us where these panels are so that we know later on. And these do look quite low resolution here, but
but that's just because Maya is displaying them at a lower resolution than what they are. I think I'm currently working at 3K maps. Now these, they probably won't be supplied along with this tutorial at that high resolution, because we're gonna try and keep the file size lower. But just so you know, it looks low resolution here, but that's just a display um, from what Maya is displaying, because it's just reducing the textures just to keep things fast and in memory. So yeah, as I say, we're going to focus just purely on the torso. So the limbs will be updating as well as we go, but it's just exactly the same process. So here we have the first pass, and that's just marking out these details, adding in these decals, textures, uh, other key areas. 